So my name is Long. My name is Vinicius. We're from Team Greenstream, and we're going to present System Water Point to you. Now, let me ask you a question. What do you think is the most, like, what, what, what do you think is the, the necessity that every person has? And what is the 20 trillion USD dollars market? Does anyone know? Any ideas? It's water. Now, there's an estimated 2.5 billion people <coughs> that lack access to sanitized water. Moreover, 1.7 million children under the age of five yearly die because of illness due to shortage of drinkable water. 50% of world population uses contaminated water. This may in turn lead to contracting diseases such as cholera or polio. <clears throat> the world's population is increasing exponentially every day. An average person needs around 22, mm, 22 liters of water for different purposes. Now, this water needs to be clean. And if we take into calculation that 7.6 billion people, that's 6.1 times 10 to the 13 liters per year. So fresh water, definitely. Freshwater sources are drying up. Large aquifers are being depleted and polluted with fertilizers and pesticides. We're coming from Israel. And the way Israel gets its water is through desalination. This is a process that takes salt from salinated water. We can see that it's pretty advantageous since it's working out for Israel, right? But it is undoubtedly, it undoubtedly has its disadvantages. It's extremely expensive. And also, it produces highly concentrated brine solutions, which are absolutely detrimental to the environment. The salt and different minerals are also put back into the uh, salinated water, and it makes the salinated water even more salinated, which is, of course, bad for the environment. What about air? Let's look at air. The worldwide average water in air content is 1.275 times 10 to the 13 meters cubed. And that's exactly three times the words that I know were consumption. Let's start to begin with the market case and the market side of water, definitely. So taking into consideration US prices that can actually vary uh, the type of water, considering 0.004 USD, we have per person annually around 250 USD dollars. Taking to this uh, global level, we have around uh, considering the variation of the tap water prices, um, we have around six trillion USD dollars. However, the international prices, they're much higher than the US one, definitely. They can uh, actually achieve uh, 10 times the prices from here, and we come with a price, a market size between six to 20 trillion USD dollars at minimum. So imagine getting 1% of this, that's a tremendous amount, that's a huge market. Okay, let's, uh, let's look at our competition. There's four different major companies that are working in our sector. But our main competitor is coming from Israel as well. It's called Watergen. Let's look at this table. Uh, our product, our system, is located in the bottom left corner. Now, let's, uh, I'd like to shift your focus to the water production in gallons per day. We can clearly see this is the minimum amount that we have calculated according to our experiments. It's 250 gallons per day. That's tremendously more, much more than Watergen. And if we look at the price, it's less than $10,000. The only price that's smaller than that on this table is the price from EcoBlue. However, EcoBlue only produces 32 gallons per day. So it's a low level entrance product, uh, yeah, product that is uncomparable to ours. Definitely and clearly seen where point produced by Green Shrimp would be the most efficient from the market. Giving a perspective of one month and what well, actually the water point, the system, and standard a machine can actually do it. So taking into consideration the water consumption of an average family as 20,000 liters a month, and we get our standard water point machine production, we have 60,000 liters a month. So consequently, easily, the water point machine can supply an average three average families per month. 
Okay, let's, uh, let's take a look at our timeline. So in the first quarter of 2018, we're planning with the investment that we've garnered to produce a first prototype. In the fourth quarter of 2018, uh, we're going to try to focus on product engineering, which means um, completing sell, sales with, co with completing, uh, confirming sales with consumers, and starting to scout for different locations where we could locate our factory. The first quarter of 2018, uh, 2019, sorry, is where we're going to set up our factory and start initial production. There's actually a prospect. Uh, we've been in talks with the Palestinian authorities, and the factory might as well be in Palestine, which will in turn lead to negative peace, and that may be a very good contribution. Now, the second quarter of 2019 is where we will start our shipment. Also, just a quick mention, since we're coming from a school that's so internationally diverse and has an international base, there's students from over 40 different countries, and we want to use these 40 different countries in order to, um, so each student has contacts and access to different international embassies, and working with these, with these embassies is gonna provide uh, sort of a channel and a way for us to work with different countries and try to get governmental deals. Business to government. So let's begin with our machine. Though so actually, Waterpoint can do it. So the description of machine will be described throughout four simple steps. So like other devices, where point will condensate water from air. Unlike other devices, we will capture the energy and reuse it. For the step one, outside air will, will be sucked into the machine. And as long as the air passes through the desiccant panel, we're going to have a desiccant panel. And desiccant panel is basically uh, uh, silica gels. And at the same time, the silica gel is going to absorb water, humidity. The energy, the temperature from the desk is going to increase. And energy increased and temperature increased in the desk component, you decrease the efficiency of capturing water. So that's why we come in. So we basically try to take out this energy, take out this latent heat, and push out to the other desiccant. So as the second step, the energy from the first panel is transferred to the second panel, which heats the second panel to expel previously absorbed water. So this energy is going to be uh, transferred from the first desiccant to the second one by a heat pump. What happens is that current uh, machines on the market, they, they're actually wasting a lot of money because on the first desiccant panel, with the necessity to cool it down, they're using a machine just to cool it down. And in the second desiccant, they're using a machine just to heat it up. And that's actually what is, what your point is doing is being efficient, using something that is, is, is not good for the first part of the, uh, of the machine and bringing it to the other one. And giving the third step, whenever we have on the first tube from this, the first desiccant panel, first part, we have a cool and dried air. And the second uh, part, we're going to have a hot and moist air. And these, these air streams are going to uh, overlap into a air and air, air and air heat exchanger, thus condensating the water and producing water. However, what happens is that during the time, the absorbent phase is going to be saturated with water. And at the absorption phase, the second desiccant panel is going to be um, completely dried up. So what happened? We created a system to shift, to change its position, so we can actually make the second cycle of the system. So that's basically our background experiment. Because what happened, we did, we put like a basic desiccant panel, and we tried to uh, drag the air uh, through our industrial fan, so we can actually uh, know in Tel Aviv conditions how many uh, absorption of water we can have, and we got uh, with minimum perspectives that water point using Tel Aviv condition in Israel, we can produce between one to two uh, meter cubics per day, uh, 1,000 to 1,000 meter cubics per day. Now, this is our team. Why is our team the right one? Why is our team, what makes it different from Watergen? Why would we succeed against such a company that's already established its rules, already has its market? Now, from France to Israel, from Israel to Palestine, from, from Palestine to Japan, from Japan to Vietnam, from Vietnam to Brazil, back to Belgium. These are countries, it's, this international base, this diverse group of people, we bring different channels, we bring different connections, and this reach and sort of uh, extent to which we, we can, um, to which we can uh, sort of go is absolutely tremendous. Now, next point. These are the four uh, countries from which we've talked about. Um, these are the four different countries from which the governmental officials were. Now, these were students uh, from our school, 
and they managed to sort of successfully, successfully uh, plan these meetings. And all these four different uh, government officials from Cameroon, Nigeria, South Africa, and State of Palestine were really keen and expressed uh, absolute interest in this product after we produced uh, our first prototype. Now, why are we credible? Why do you think that uh, that's another point, we're credible because of the fact <laughs> that we're young. Now, you may not believe that, but I can prove this to you. So, this is my friend Siseko. He comes from South Africa. More specifically, he lives in Cape Town. And I think, as many of you know, Cape Town nowadays is suffering a huge water, water shortage and a huge drought that, that's been one of the biggest in its history. And so we decided, we talked to Siseko, and we thought, you know, let's try, to, let's try to make some sort of change. Let's try to think of something that we could do. So we teamed up with a charity, Water for Cape Town, that has, a, that has established itself in South Africa, and it's trying to help and try to get water for uh, these different areas that are being affected. And so uh, if you look at the video, we've already had one week. We only had one week. Um, try to take a guess. Try to think how many views did we oh. It's actually there, but actually, next point. Next actually, point. I would correct. It was less than one week. Less than one week. <laughs> We've managed to get almost one third of a million views in that one week, and I think uh, that has been really successful. And in a way, we're really glad that we could help our, our classmate in that sense. So that's, that's, that's uh, sort of the credibility that we have garnered from that. Now, uh, this is our Facebook page. Oh, sorry. This is our Facebook page. Uh, please take a visit. Please look at the video. Uh, we'd also like to acknowledge uh, another uh, Georgia Tech alum who's our physics teacher and helped us tremendously on this journey and uh, was giving a lot of advice. So we'd like to thank him first. So now we, ask, we can ask ourselves, like, where's the green stream goal? And with the make point system. Make clean water. For Definitely. the entire planet. How? Well, how? Out of thin air. Out of thin air. Thank you. <laughs> Congrats, guys. Fascinating idea. Really interesting innovation there. What... Um, what was missing for me was, who, what's the business model? Are you selling these directly to consumers? At, um, and you know, you're talking about the volume of production that exceeds one family. Would it, would you be selling them at large to communities or you know the kibbutz or you know how would you? What's the sales model? Oh, sorry. So so I'll start. Um, there's different ways that we can take, but our main idea was do um, securing governmental governmental contracts and selling these machines to them. There's, uh, there's another possibility, which is licensing uh, the producing of these machines f uh, through a third party, or such as Watergen, uh, have contracts with different militaries. For example, Watergen obviously has uh, a military contract with the Israel, uh, Israeli Defense Force. So just to clarify, so we're not focused just on families. Definitely families are actually con uh, a target also, but we can actually tackle IGOs, NGOs, and so so. What was the f what was the price point on the product? So the initial prototype, uh, Israeli prices just for the material that would cost around six to seven thousand dollars. However, uh, we could get that price down if we were in different countries, so that's around $5,000 only for the initial prototype. Uh, if we're going to account for economies of scale, we could reduce that to around one-tenth of that if we're going to produce it, for example, in China, these different materials. And so uh, our price point, we will be, we will be selling our product, uh, as mentioned on the table, for around $10,000. $10, and uh, if you compare that to the water gen, which is likewise a parallel system to ours, that costs thirty thousand dollars. So there's that um, cost edge that gives us uh, an advantage. So there's actually so there was like what he mentioned is like predictions. So like as as long as we have like sort of partnership with industries, definitely the price will decrease tremendously. I'd like to hear your why for this company. Why? What? What's your passion for it? Why?
discussion why I want to do that. Yeah? So, um, so I don't know. Like, in Israel, we have a big problem with water because we only desalinize like, the water from the sea, but in the same way, it just like, ruins the environment in, like, like, around Israel and like, more and more in the, around the world. So the fact that we, can, we could produce water from the air, which is uh, an infinite resource, and, it, and in a way, it, it's uh, like green, and we don't waste any energy in the process. So it would help developed countries with, uh, with the problem of environment issues, but also, and most importantly, the developing countries who don't have access to drinkable water. But it's worth highlighting that we come from Eastern Mediterranean International School, Amis, for sure. And there, one of the main missions is make uh, education a force for peace and sustainability on the Middle East. And there, we're very engaged with various projects related to this. And that's one of our, the things that, brilliant things that comes from our school. And we're all inspired with this. And, you know, it may sound like a cliche, but save the world. <laughs> I would say also that, like, I have an experience with this. The first time that when you actually start a project, you don't come like, oh, let's do a business by this project. You're like, that's a specific case. Um, you just, like, do, like, a physics project. For instance, I had, like, a chemistry project related to production of auto and septic before. And then we applied to a business competition. And we, we said, like, whoa, you guys can, dip, can make it. You know, like, let's turn this to a business. And I was like, oh, that's fascinating. You know, like... And after this, actually, the business failed, but it was a nice experience. Uh, I came to MS, and there we met. Uh, we developed a project. We're still developing. And actually, a good reward to developing a project, developing such a machine that can transform what you're making turning point is by applying to the business world. All right, guys. Great job. Let's give them a